Hi Sequels friends! I am really thrilled to share this video with you. It is my second ever episode of Travel to Thrift. This time I traveled to Charlotte, North Carolina. Now I was going to Charlotte to see a comedy show and I figured I'd tack on an extra day or so to kind of explore the town and also hopefully get some thrifting done. Now if you are not familiar, Travel to Thrift is when you do some traveling and then you also, while you're out, do some thrifting in hopes of finding enough thrifted treasures to resell so that you can hopefully pay for all of your traveling expenses. Come along with me, see some of the stuff that I did when I was in Charlotte, and also see a haul of all the stuff I got, and even more importantly, did I thrift enough stuff to where I can potentially pay for my entire travel expenses of this entire trip? Stay tuned and let's see. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. It is wonderful to have you here and I do appreciate you watching. If you're new, my name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Etsy. And I like to use this YouTube channel to document my journey. So if you're interested in all things reselling, um, bolo items, thrifting, and even some unboxings, then you will definitely wanna go ahead and hover over that sequels icon and hit that subscribe button. So let's get right into it. I headed over to Charlotte, North Carolina to see a comedy show. I went to go see Andrew Schultz and I am damned excited about it. And even more exciting beyond that, this is his last intimate comedy club show. The very next show is his infamous tour, which are done in big humongous theaters. And as you can tell from right here, I had a pretty dang good seat. So it was tons of fun, well worth the trip alone to Charlotte. As we do when we have to head out a distance to go to a comedy show, we typically stay for a day or two and explore the town. And that is exactly what we did on this trip. But we did stay in an Airbnb and I stayed over on the west side um, I don't know what the area was called, but it was very close to Freedom Drive. It was a really cute neighborhood. There were lots of things to do, lots of bars, lots of places to eat, coffee houses, and the like. The first night we went to Noble Smoke. Yes, we have a shit ton of barbecue places in Western North Carolina, specifically Asheville, and you know we had to try Charlotte Barbecue, and this place did not disappoint. Oh my God, it was so good. The beer I got on tap was awesome. The smokiness of this barbecue, ugh, if you like smoking your barbecue, this is the place for you. The next day we ended up getting up early, heading on over to downtown and just kind of looking around and seeing what the town had to offer. We ended up heading over to South End doing some exploring, Noda and doing some exploring. And then we settled in for a while at Optimus Hall, which we fell in love with. Coming from Asheville, we are total foodies, of course. How could you not be and live in Asheville? And we are spoiled by the quality of um, eats that we can get here. And I have to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised by what Optimus Hall had to offer. We ended up starting out with undercurrent coffee. We just got some coffee in us so that we could kind of absorb <laughs> all of the other options that there were and decide where we wanted to go to. We decided to, to try the dump lady because it is highly highly rated as one of Charlotte's best and I love me some dumplings and I also yeah. bow and broth and oh my god both of those were so fantastic after exploring all those neighborhoods for the day, we ended up coming back to our neighborhood where our Airbnb is and went to Pinkies on diners, drive-ins, and dives to give you an idea of the place. And we had some decent cocktails. Um, and then we enjoyed some hot dogs and french fries, which was kind of fun. And then we ended up coming home and um, relaxing for the rest of the evening in our big backyard and running max and um, getting ready to wake up the next day to do some thrifting. 
So the last day of our trip, we decided to grab some coffee right in our neighborhood. After the coffee, we stayed um, in our neighborhood and started thrifting there first, and we headed over to the community thrift store. The prices in Charlotte are higher than they are in Asheville, which I was just suspecting but to start out this this at this particular thrift store was a bit of a shock as their prices were much higher definitely a thrift store I would shop probably not one that I would find a lot for resale now if you're in the Charlotte area feel free to school me in the comment section below if you found gems there let me know Next, staying along this same area, we went to Value Village. I have never been to a Value Village, but out of all the resellers that I follow in Charlotte, I knew that it was a place to go to. I have the theory that if I search for things in multiple categories, my top selling categories, and I don't find anything, then it's probably time for me to move on and go to another thrift store. And that was the case for this particular store. It just wasn't giving me much. I ended up picking up this vintage Venencia top it is plus size it is big and oversized show you the label here it is a size it is a size 26 28 it does have shoulder pads it is humongous tunic top and it is oversized I absolutely adore this long sleeve which can be rolled up it has a chest pocket and it has really cute buttons. The only downside is the buttons um, have, looks like two of them have been replaced because the thread's not the exact color. I love, love this top. I want to share with you guys on Instagram how to style it since it is in my size and I don't pick up a lot of things in my size to show you guys how to style. So be sure to head on over and follow me on Instagram so that you don't miss out on that. After we hit up that Value City, we ended up going over to a Goodwill, but once we got there, we figured out it was a bins. But we decided that we were not in the mood for bin shopping. It's just a mindset that you have to be in, so we decided to pass on that. We ended up hitting the Salvation Army on Central Avenue and, oh, I love this store. Now, at this point, we're getting we're getting through half of the day, so I'm gonna focus on just vintage things. The more vintage that I can pick up, likely the more money I can make. I love this Salvation Army. It reminds me of the big, beautiful Salvation Army stores in Florida. This store is gorgeous, 80s with the neon lights. I was in heaven here. Let me show you all the stuff that I got. Now they have tons of wall art and this piece I immediately fell in love with. I'm gonna try to show it to you. My ring light, of course, is gonna show up in it. It is totally 80s, totally rad, brass, gold colored brass frame. It is a really decent size. It's like 3D paper, so I hope that you can see it. It is a dusty pink a green teal and these are 3d so it's layered 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 and then in the middle is a cat with a cricket I bought it for $4.99 and I'm hoping I'd really love to find somebody who appreciates it as much as me um, a lot of this art that's in the same similar motif from California thrift stores is selling in the 150 range but to be honest with you even if I could get about 50 for it I would be happy Otherwise, it's gonna stay in my studio. Moving along into home goods, I found these two crate and barrel items. They're just cute little mugs and they have, it, they look like they're new because this tag is on it and it's never been removed. And this tag is on it and never been removed. And then this is just a little stirrer that you can use to stir your coffee, hot cocoa, cider cute little woodland themed, holiday themed, great for cabins. And I got a set of two of them and I am gonna sell them together as a set. Vermilion and Davis Marketing and it is the pattern called Welcome to My Home. Again, I'm gonna try to show you without much ring light on it. See, it's just very cottage core. Um, it's like a baking dish, casserole dish, serving dish, very 80s, um, country in a blue kitchen with lots of lace. 
um, and it has a little home scene with a cat and a dog. Now I've seen this in the coffee pot pitcher. I've seen a creamer, but I have not seen this exact piece. So I did mark it as rare when I listed it. I'm hoping because of the cottagecore vibes um, and kind of cutesy vibes that I can move it. It is a cross body bag in a gorgeous buttery, oh, can you see it even on camera? A buttery a soft black leather. Has the flip top, all the pockets here. Single compartment, though I am bummed to figure out that this zipper is off the tracks, but luckily it's the inside zipper. I still should have noticed that in store. Um, it's got a zipper pocket here, and then the back has this full zip around with dividers and the, the card dividers and ID in the inside. This is this is Jack George. I did not know anything about this brand. I picked it up merely because it definitely is genuine leather and it is definitely in good quality leather. As a plus size gal who has an appreciation for vintage, I feel you guys um, that are looking for that. It's not always something that you find when you're on the lookout, but if you look for it, you'll be surprised. It is out there and you will find it. This is, an, is Expressions Plus. It is a size 22W. Follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this one too, where I showed you how you can style something vintage and play on the vintage aspects or take it and make it look a bit more modern. This looks like a button down, but it only buttons down at the shirt, so it's faux at the bottom. It's short sleeves. You do have the cuff with a tab. It does have like the wooden, the wooden style of buttons. And it's a big old shirt dress, like a maxi shirt dress. And then you have the slits at the side for easy movement. Very fashionable, love the burnt orange color. Would look so good with some sleek, even sleek kitten hair boots, but some sleek leather boots for fall. Layer it with some knits and it would be very on trend right now. Next up, I already packaged this one because I forgot that I hadn't made my video yet. This is a Main Street Blue Denim Romper Pinafore Overall. <laughs> I'll put a picture of it right here so you can see it better. This was a fabulous find. It is in a size 36W. I love the denim aspect. I love this as a market dress. This could be very cool for a lagging look if you really wanted to layer it on. Everything about this on top of it being vintage and plus size, everything about the styling just seemed spot on. Romper, overall, I mean, everybody's calling these different. It's basically a button front fitted dress, two chest pockets, maxi length, and it even has a cute little pocket at the back. This would look totally cute with a fitted long sleeve shirt under it and some um, ankle boots. This would look gorgeous layered up with some tall boots, like I said with the last one, layer on some cardigan knits over the top of it. This would be cute for a market dress. Don't wear anything under it besides a sports bra or even unbutton the whole freaking thing and wear it as a duster or a vest. It is a lot, a lot of versatility in this vintage piece. I believe it's a US size eight. It's a 38. It is nan Nanita, Nanika. It has a phone number. Most things that I found that have a phone number are vintage, usually 40s or 50s. However, this phone number goes to India. So I'm not sure if it's 40s or 50s vintage in India or if their phone number stayed on their tags longer. It looks almost to me like it's an Indian kurta where you would wear the long dress over the pants. It does have a scoop neck, very cute pin tucking detail here so it gathers at the waist. Um, cuffed longer, those longer short sleeves like the ones I have on now. And it has a circle skirt, beautiful border. And look at the color, it's so pretty. It's like um, heathered. 
And the last dress that I found is, again, $6.99. I'm starting it out at $59. It is vintage Bloomingdale's dead stock. I am guessing, based on that being a loop label, that it is vintage 90s. Here's the original tag, which is so cool to see. It retailed for $99 in the 90s, and it got down to $34. It still even has the buttons and stuff on it. So this is for real, true dead stock. I picked this up in addition to being vintage because it is linen. It is 100% linen and it is in a natural weave. Very similar themes with what I picked up. Um, this is a half button down, two patch pockets, and it has almost a slight dolman sleeve, slight back, back wing, um, a longer sleeve. And, um, you know, below the knee. It definitely has those early 90s, late 80s vibes with the gold buttons. And it also came with, in the pocket, which I don't know if this actually came with it or somebody left it in the pocket, but I'm selling it with it, a um, animal print little square scarf. And then to complete the day, because at this point we decided that we would go ahead and get tickets to see the Van Gogh experience. So we ended up cutting our thrifting um, trip a little bit short, but we did hit a, another value village as it was right there on Central Avenue as well. And I picked up some vintage goodies there too. First up is this, I'm assuming it's Sylvia. It is um, a Raimi Rayon mix. And given that loop label, I'm assuming this is 90s. I like this because it's very cottage core. Again, I picked up a lot of the very same silhouettes with these like oversized shift, sheath, shift. I always confuse the two. It is maxi length. It does have the, ple the, the open slits on both sides for easy movement and a really pretty pink color and a keyhole neckline. And it is paired with this little crop shirt. This would be great to wear together if you want true cottage core vibes, or you could um, wear them as separates. You could pair this with some darker colors or some blacks if you want it to be a bit more moody and less cottage core. I mean, this would be cute with even like cut off shorts and some sandals. This is totally, again, cottage core, totally 80s, almost annoyingly so, so I hope people are gonna like it. I did sell a dress, I'll pop it up here, um, that's somewhat similar vibe to this that sold for me, so I hope that this one does really well too. It looks like a um, linen, but I don't believe that it actually has the care label in it to know, and it is a very all over, very 80s Waverly type of floral rose print. This is just an elastic waist pencil skirt with a back kick pleat. And if that wasn't 80s enough for you, again, separates, because separates, especially vintage separates, have sold for me. And I do think you get a higher dollar amount for them as you can, especially if you can tell or let them know about the versatility of it. And here is the 80s jacket. <laughs> It looks like it sits at about the waist. It does button on both sides. You do have that very 80s pearl button with the gold around it. Yes, it has shoulder pads. Yes, it has a little bit of um, puckered at the um, sleeve, which looks like it's three quarters, and it does have pink piping around the edge. Adore this set. It is Kaus. When I when I asked Google to pronounce it, they say Kaus, but I feel like it was pronounced Chaus back in the day, but I could just not be sophisticated. This is a rayon separate. It is navy and it is in a cool paisley print, extremely lightweight. It has a very blouse-like feel, but you can tell that it is structured like a double-breasted blazer. You have 
velcroed in removable shoulder pads. Oh my gosh, this would look so cute with a red pencil skirt and a little red top under it. It would look awesome with some um, trousers, shorts. I mean, ugh, I love everything about it. But what they paired it with is this pleated lightweight. It does have this, you know, where it buttons on the side so it has the single pocket. It does have the single pocket just so you'll be so 80 chic with your one hand in the pocket. And it is um, kind of like a below the knee, maybe a midi length which again, pair this with a red or a yellow or even a white crop top and even some sneakers, it would be so cute with some Converse. So that is it for the haul. After that, we ended up um, running on over to Camp North End, which is a very cool area of Charlotte to see the Van Gogh immersion. So I'll include a really cool video of that here. the breakdown. Our Airbnb costs 580 about $2. Um, going out for coffee, going out for food, all of those trips, we ended up going back to Optimus after thrifting to grab some pizza. All of that food and some gas ended up coming to $284. So our total trip came in at 865 that doesn't include the cost to go thrifting. Between the two value villages and the Salvation Army, I spent $66.90. Now I kept that separate as I do tell you what I project my net numbers to be and that will come off of that net. So I didn't want to take that off twice. Overall, with all of the items that I showed you, I have the potential to make 477 and that is to gross 477 to $802. So not enough to pay for my whole trip because you know I rarely if ever come in at the high. Um, but I do want to confirm that all of this stuff was between two people. <laughs> so if I was just trying to cover my own costs, we would cut that in half and it would be $432. And that is very doable within these gross projections. But as I always say, who gives a shit about gross? Gross means nothing. Tell me what you think the net projections are gonna be. That's the actual money you're putting in your pocket. Well, for me, my yearly thus far year to date, my gross margin has come in at about an average of 67%. So if you take 67% off of those numbers, I am looking to make anywhere between $320 and $537. So definitely enough to pay for my share, not enough to pay for both shares or definitely enough to pay for all of the fun we had, but not enough to pay for the Airbnb. I know I just hit a small microcosm of Charlotte with my thrifting trip, and I would love to explore some of the other neighborhoods, as I know a few of you guys gave me some tips of places to go, and none of them were the places that I went, so I definitely have an excuse to go back. If you're in Charlotte and there is a place that you love or that you would like me to check out, whether it be food, entertainment, or thrifting, please leave it in the comment section below. As I know I'll be heading over there again and I would love to go check out some of your suggestions. So what do you think? Is it gonna be possible for me to sell this amount of stuff and make some money? Do you think, um, how long do you think it's gonna take to turn around? I don't know, but make sure you hit that subscribe button because as with every unboxing that I do, once I've sold through 50% of the goods, I will come back and give you an update so that you know whether I got anywhere to close to my gross and net projections. So I hope that you found this video fun. I know I'm definitely enjoying making these travel to thrift videos. You are loving them as well. Make sure you like it, comment it, or share it, and I will be sure to make some more. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a fantabulous weekend, and I will be back at you on Tuesday with a new video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.